welcome to Engineer Your Space. Lighting can be a challenge, especially when you're a renter and you inherit some not so inspiring overhead ceiling fixtures. I'm no exception. I have these really plain and boring fixtures that I'd love to change, but I don't want to get into electrical wiring, especially being a renter, so I thought instead, why not just camouflage them with a drum shape? It adds instant style and personality to the room. No electrician needed. I'm going to show you how easy they are to make with just plain and basic materials like embroidery hoops, wallpaper, and poster board. So let's get started. To start off, you're going to need two wooden embroidery hoops like these. They come in many different sizes, and you can get them at craft stores and fabric stores. And they're really inexpensive. Mine are 14 inches, and they were only about $2 each. One thing to keep in mind when you're picking the size of your hoops is to make sure that you have enough room for the air to circulate and the heat to dissipate. You really don't want to create a fire hazard, so it's important to keep that in mind. Now the next thing we need to do is figure out how much material we're going to need to go around our hoops. And to do that, you can use a string or the wallpaper to trace out what you need. Or you can just calculate the circumference, which is pi, 3.14, times the diameter, which in my case is 14 inches. So I need at least 44 inches in material. But because we're going to have a joint and there's going to be overlap, um, you need to add at least another two inches to account for that. It's just best to have more material to work with than less. Now here's the wallpaper that I'm going to be using for the shade. I've already cut it to the length that I need, and it's really up to you how high you want to make your shade. I made mine nine inches high, so it would make a big statement in the room. Now my wallpaper isn't thick enough or rigid enough to um, be structurally sound for the shade. So I'm going to add some poster board here as my lining. And it's just going to add, give it that extra rigidity. And also on the inside, the white's going to reflect the light nicely. Unfortunately, my poster board doesn't come in um, lengths longer than 28 inches. So I'm going to be cutting two strips of this and just gluing them together. Get poster board that has a grid already embedded in it. It makes cutting a straight line really easy. I'm using an all-purpose craft glue for the joint, and I recommend lining up the two pieces next to a straight edge, like the side of a table, just to make sure that everything glues together as straight as possible. So now that we have our lining done, it's time to make the shade. This is the fun part. You're gonna need the two inner rings uh, from your embroidery hoops. You're gonna need some clips like this that you get from your office supply store. And you're also gonna need some glue. I like well bond glue because it binds just about anything to anything. Now the best way I've found to do this is to put the glue on the edge of your paper and then you take the hoop like this and you line it up right up to the edge of the lining. Lift the lining up along the ring and then you clip it here at the edge and you want to do that making sure that it's lined up right right along the top of the ring. And as you go along, you make sure it's nice and tight along the ring, and you clip it as you go along, and that's gonna make sure that it dries right on the ring, because you really want it to be snug. You don't wanna have any play whatsoever. And you just keep going. And then when you get to the joint, this is where you don't want to glue the entire joint. You want to just glue half of it um, because you want to leave the other one unglued so that you can tighten it as much as you want when you're doing the other um, ring. And then you do the same thing on the other side and you wait for about half an hour to make sure everything dries properly. And after that, we're going to be ready to put our wallpaper on. Now we're ready to put the wallpaper on. And to do that, we're gonna use Mod Podge. It's an all-in-one glue sealer and finish that you can use on any type of surface, and it dries clear. I love Mod Podge. You can use it for so many different things, and we're actually gonna use it a little bit later on. So it's really simple. Put some Mod Podge onto the lining like this. Once you have Mod Podge everywhere, you take your wallpaper, and you wanna start it off where there is no joint in the cardboard. That's just to make it stronger. You line it up like this. It's easier if you just turn it around like that. And you make sure that it's as straight and lined up with the rims as possible. 
you take the clips to secure the beginning of it, and that's going to make it easier for the rest to just hold it in place like that, and you just trace it along the edge. And for the joint, you just put with a more Mod Podge. Now I've found that the best way to make sure that the wallpaper dries uniformly all the way around is to use the outer ring from the hoop and to just place it over the edge like this and you just tighten it. And that's going to make sure that you have a nice snug fit. You do the same for the other side and wait for about 30 minutes for it to dry. And then after that, we're going to be ready for some embellishments. You could leave the shade like this if you want, but there's a couple of embellishments I wanted to make to it. I wanted to dress up the joint a little bit, and I came up with these little brads. They're really cute. I chose anti-copper to go with my wallpaper, but they come in many different colors, so I'm sure you'll find some that will fit um, whatever color your shade is going to be. And they're really easy to install. Starting half an inch from the edge of the joint, and about three quarters of an inch from the edge of the bottom rim, mark off where the brads will go spacing them out evenly. Then you stop three quarters of an inch from the top edge. Use a needle to make the holes, wiggling a bit if you need to make the hole bigger. You take the brad and push it in through the hole gently. On the other side of the shade, you just pull apart the stem of the brad and voila, your brad is in. Super simple, you just repeat that all the way along. Now it's time to move on to the ribbon. And you certainly can leave the edge plain, just like it is now. But ribbon is a great way to hide any imperfections that you might have along the edge if you've had to trim here and there and it doesn't look as pretty as you want it to look. The best ribbon I've found to do this is quarter inch bias tape, double folded. It has a bit of a stretch to it and it's super easy to put on. All you need is, again, I'm using my well bond glue just because it's easy to work with. You don't really need a lot. If you have any excess, you can always use a toothpick to just even it out, make sure you don't have any globs. And then you just put your ribbon, starting it at the joint. And to make sure that it stays in place while you're gluing the rest, you just want to put a little clip here at the beginning. And I like to do the top and the bottom, but you can certainly just do the bottom if you would like. I've seen that done as well. And you just keep on going. So here's the shade with the ribbon done. I think it makes it look a lot more finished and more sophisticated. Now another thing that you could do to the rim is you could stain it or paint it even. This stain I actually made myself by soaking a pad of steel wool in about a cup of vinegar over a couple of days and that's it. The liquid turns really dark and you get this beautiful rich looking stain. Now one problem that we have to deal with um, that we haven't addressed is the fact that when this is going to be hanging on the ceiling, uh, we're going to be seeing our ugly fixture that's still there. So we want to put in um, a light diffuser at the bottom to take care of that. And there's a couple of ways that I found that would work to make this. The first way is by using this chopping mat that um, I found at the dollar store. So you get two for a dollar, so you can't really beat the price. Um, and it comes with this already frosted finish that's perfect to sort of diffuse the light but still hide what's behind it. And they're really easy to cut and handle. But this will only work if your shade is 12 inches or smaller. And my shade is 14 inches wide, so I'm gonna need to use something else. I found these um, lighting panels that are typically used for fluorescent lights. They come in panels that are four feet by two feet. This one is two feet by two feet. Um, they're pretty affordable too. Like a large panel will be anywhere from five to $10, depending on what type of finish you have. Now, one thing about this material is that it's a bit tricky to cut. And let me show you one way that I found that seems to work. First, you need to get your outside hoop and close it completely. By tracing the inside rim of this circle, you're gonna get exactly the right size diffuse that you need. But before you go ahead and do it on your lighting panel, I would suggest that you do it on a cardboard first so that you get a template like this. And this allows you to make sure that you've got exactly the right size circle so that when you put it into your shade, it fits all the way around nicely. It doesn't fall through and also doesn't give you any gaps along the side. It's really important. And by doing this first, you're gonna make sure that you're only gonna be cutting once 
and you're not going to have to touch up again because this material is really difficult to handle and you really don't want to do it any more than you have to. So now we're ready to trace the circle. I just use a Sharpie to do that. Because this material is very brittle, it has a tendency to want to break apart into a million little pieces when you cut it. So to prevent that from happening, we're going to put masking tape all around the outline that we just drew. And it's going to minimize that problem. Then taking a utility knife, you score the line that you traced. You have to score it several times, and you're not going to go through the material. The scoring just really helps keep a clean edge when you're cutting with the scissors. You really don't want to skip this step because it's really your best insurance policy to ensure that this is going to work the first time around. Trust me. Make sure you put on safety glasses before you start cutting. You don't want to have any of those little pieces getting into your eyes. You want to use heavy duty scissors for this because it will make things a lot easier. Now we can take the masking tape off. Even if the edge isn't perfect, it doesn't really matter because we won't really see the edge. So that's a good thing. It's forgiving. You can certainly use this diffuser as is if you want. I don't particularly like the look of this. So I'm going to add some fabric to it. This really sheer linen-like fabric that I found and I think it's going to add a lot of softness to it and make it look a lot nicer. Now to put this on, I'm just going to use Mod Podge. It's very simple. You just take the Mod Podge and slather it on. I'm going to be very generous with this Mod Podge. Make sure you get a lot of it at, at the edge just so that it sticks very well. You want to smooth out any wrinkles that you see along the way. You just have to let this dry for about an hour or two and trim off the excess fabric and it'll be ready to put into the shape. So here's the finished diffuser. I just love the way it looks with the fabric on it. I think it makes it look a lot softer, a lot more elegant than just the diffuser alone. And when you put it inside the shape, it really fits nice and snug. And now when this is up on the ceiling, you won't be able to see that ugly fixture anymore. Perfect. Now the only thing left to do to make this ready for hanging is to put in ice screws. You need to put in three ice screws equally spaced out at, on the top rim. To make sure that they are evenly spaced, you take a string and measure out a third of the circumference. You put in one ice screw. Make sure that it doesn't go through the other side though. Then you take the string, line it up with the ice screw, and you trace the side of the ring with it. When you get to the mark, that's where your next ice screw needs to be. You repeat for the third one, and then you're done. Before I get to showing you how to hang this on the ceiling, I want to talk about another way that you can use the shade construction to make a really cool two-tier lampshade. To make it, you build the two shades just like we did before, making the inner shade three inches longer than the outer one, and four inches smaller in diameter. You join the two shades with paper clips that you simply straighten like this, and hook in place through the eye screws installed at the top rims of both shades. Here's an example uh, that I made. Because the inside of the outer shade will be visible, I used a silver post board to complement the wallpaper. And instead of staining the rim, I used this great product called Rub and Buff. You can just apply it with your fingers or with a cloth, and this gives this really great silver, shiny metallic finish. So this is another great way that you can hide some unsightly fixtures that you may have around the house. It's time to go and hang these now, and I can't wait to show you how great they look in the room. First, take off the cover of the existing fixture. That's going to give you a lot more light when you put on your shade. And I'll be using the three holes here to hang my shade from, using these S-hooks that I made from a paper clip. If you don't have holes like these to work with, you can use anchors and ice screws in the ceiling instead. You repeat for the other two holes, and you're done. I just love the way my drum shade looks in my dining room. It just ties the whole room together, adds a lot of style and personality, much better than what was there before. And this two-tier shade just adds a little something extra to my otherwise pretty ordinary entryway. Well, I hope you've been inspired to take a look at your unsightly fixtures that you might be living with and see if they could benefit from a little camouflage. See you next time.